Well, I don't know why we gave the phone numbers. The lines are already jammed. We'll be back in a moment. John Lear, our guest, will take your phone calls on our next Coast to Coast program. By the way, tomorrow night will be our Friday and the Saturday night open lines. But for the first hour, I'm going to talk with someone by the name of Anonymous about that very strange box called the Dybbuk box. So get ready for that one. But we'll be back in a moment. John Lear, your phone calls next on Coast to Coast AM. Did you ever come across anything, uh, John, which would show that during this episode with extraterrestrials uh, that there were fights involved? I mean, did you have any pilot friends or anybody tell you about that? No, I didn't, but I've read all the uh, <clears throat> the um, incidents about the incidents of, um, of when we tried to shoot things down, and I think we lost about 200 aircraft. Like I remember Art once, a couple of years ago, was talking about an incident that he said he heard that involved a drilling project near 51, and he said they drilled down some 2,000 feet, and as they brought the drill up, it apparently pulled up human flesh, bones, and things like that. That's, that's a bizarre story. Well, that's, you know, uh, the fact is, is this is just... Uh, uh, an experiment, a petri dish, so to speak, and every 25,000 years, I mean, it's proven uh, by historical geological records that uh, every 25,000 years or so, on an average, uh, the the uh, the Earth is is mixed up. It's it's turned on its axis, rotated on its axis, and everything is wiped off, and they start over again. Let's go to the phones now. Right, well, before we wait, go to the wait, phones, let's slow down. Then what? I just want to tell you that I remembered the name of the MJ-12 member that had the crush on my mom. His name was Hoyt Vandenberg, General Hoyt Vandenberg. Vandenberg. And uh, he was um, the um, second chief of staff for the Air Force, and uh, Air Force, uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base was named by him. And as these MJ-12 members died, they the, the, the rest of the group found somebody else to replace him, right? Correct. Okay. And now there's 36 members. Still going strong. Yep. Wild card line, you're on the air with us. Hi there. Hi. Uh, I'm having an interesting night tonight, aren't we? It is, indeed. And where might we be? I'm Jackie. I'm from, uh, well, North Las Vegas. Okay, Jackie, go ahead. Okay. Uh, John, I'm hoping you can solve a 27-year-old mystery for me. Uh, do you know what was going on in 1979? Uh, where? Well, on Mars. No. Okay. What was going on in 79 <laughs> on Mars? Well, I I used to... Work at NASA during that time and uh, uh, handling downlink telemetry. And uh, one night on our video monitors, while you know the uh, little Viking rover was uh, running around, I see two men in suits, not necessarily space suits. I mean, they looked protective, but uh, they didn't look like the bulky things that you know our astronauts use. But they came over the horizon, walking towards the. Uh, uh, Viking Explorer, and uh, our vision got cut off. I didn't see what they did with it or anything else. They were probably making repairs. Well, that's why I was wondering if they were our guys or not. Cause, yeah, they know, were. Do you know what kind of suits they wore? Pardon? Do you know what kind of suits they wore? In well, they wouldn't have to wear very much. I mean, the atmosphere is, uh, uh, there's enough atmosphere to walk around without a spacesuit on Mars, same as there is on the moon. I mean, there's not, it's like about 15,000 feet on Earth. Now, uh, you can go through a 24-hour uh, climatization uh, program on the moon, and you can walk around uh, without a spacesuit. Uh, same thing on Mars. You don't need a spacesuit. Uh, if they had one, it was just minimal. Did you have any other witnesses there while you saw this? Well, there's about a, uh, well, out of the workers, there's probably about a half a dozen of us, because uh, we were, uh, you see the typical NASA things where they got all the monitors. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you had there. a few people out there monitoring the monitors. Yeah, you got about, a, you know, the people that were up there, and then there's about a half a dozen of us downstairs because, you know, it, it was just maintaining the uh, equipment because if anything went wrong, we had to get it up quick so they didn't miss the uh, telemetry. You folks must have been amazed at what you saw. Uh, yeah, because, you know, uh, when we saw that and they cut off our 
video downstairs, of course, we ran upstairs, and, and uh, you know, they've got uh, almost side doors upstairs. They have those little windows. I don't know if you, have you been there? I have not, no. Okay. Well, they got those side doors going up to the, to the back, oh, what we call nosebleed section in most stadiums and stuff. But anyway, uh, you come out there, and uh, we could look through a little window in that because they had just locked the door, and they normally don't lock it on us. But anyway, they just locked the door, and then they came, you know, we saw some more on their monitors, and they came over some paper taped over the door. <laughs> they clipped it. Can you well, imagine Jackie, that, I John? appreciate you calling yeah. and telling us that story. It is great, and it just confirms what, what's going on. Can you here. imagine that, John? There they are looking at their telemetry, and they spot the monitors, and they're looking at the rover piece of it, and all of a sudden they t see two human beings walking into the scene. Yeah, absolutely. They were going to, just like Mars Rover cleaning off the dust. They had their paper towels and Windex and <laughs> cleaned off so it could receive the signal. Or, First time caller line, you're on the air with John Lear on Coast to Coast. Hi there. Hello? Yeah, hi. Go ahead, sir. Oh, hello, Mr. Nori and uh, Mr. Lear. Nice talking with you. Sure. I'm sure my sister in California will be talking about this show tomorrow. Uh, my name is Cliff. I'm in Dallas. And uh, it's just one thing about the whole scenario here. Um, I'm, I've been hearing about, you know, we have these, uh, the Hubble, we have the uh, spacecraft and all these different things that we sent out into space. And I'm really, it, it boggles me to, know, to think that none of our spacecraft or our satellites or anything out there in space uh, has ever been destroyed by any of these aliens. If they are, maybe, I know we have some that are hostile, we have some that are, that are not so hostile, but... I mean, we're able to land on these different planets, and uh, including Mars, and 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 take off and come on back home to Earth. And I'm just really trying to understand how come we have it, because if we land on Mars and there is life on Mars, wouldn't that be like an invasion or coming onto their land? Like if they come on to Earth, well, how would they know, perceive that, Mr. Lear? No, we're we're pretty harmless. And I'm sure we have some kind of agreement. And by the way, there's not one Hubble, there's two. There's a secret one and the one that the public knows about. Okay. I didn't know that. I hope there I hope one of them exists after a while, huh? <laughs> yep. All right, thanks. So, so do you think we have shot down or they have shot down any of our satellites? Let's see. Have they shot down any of our satellites? I don't know. There was the you know, the uh, Russian probe that uh, got the beam out of Phobos. Uh, and that was zapped. Something that happened there. And some of our stuff has been zapped in Mars. But, of course, NASA tells some of it's zapped because they don't want to share any of the information. They said, whoops, it failed, you know, and then they get the information without telling us what it is. And it's still up there doing whatever sure. it's doing. Sure, I always suspected that sometimes, too. Same thing too. with Clementine when it went up to take those fabulous pictures of the moon, you know, and uh, and then after it got done, it, you know, uh, went out of control, and we couldn't get the pictures, and da-da-da-da-da. First time uh, east of the Rockies. We'll go to you first. You're on Coast to Coast. Hi there. Hey, George. Good. This is John from Springfield, Illinois, uh, WTAX. Yes. Yeah, John, you're one of my favorite guests on the show. I'd like to tell you that. Thank you. Now, my question is, uh, what percent of astronomy taught in our schools, like colleges, is, uh, is actually correct in your mind? Uh, as far as? Totally correct as far as you're saying what's actually going on on, these, uh, pl on the planet's surfaces and the atmospheres. What is your percentage that you think that is correct that's actually being taught in our schools? Probably 5%. Really? Uh, the orbits are correct, but all the rest of the stuff, the composition of the planets and you know what's on there and the, the gases that surround them, that's all BS. Okay, is is you, it because the professor probably just doesn't know, John? Uh, no, he 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 is uh, main line. I mean, to be a professor and to keep your credentials, you better toe the line, and right? Not, not be uh, talking about anything anything strange. Sure. Well, but what I'm saying is, though, I don't think he believes there's anything strange. A lot of these guys probably aren't in the know. Yeah. Well, west of the Rockies, you're up on coast to coast. Hi there. Hello. Hi, George. Hi. Go ahead. It's Richard from Lawndale, California. Hi, Richard. Go ahead. You're on with John Lear. Hey, John. Yep. I used to work at your dad's company, Lear Astronics in Santa Monica. Oh, really? Yeah. From uh, 91 through 99. 
that was yeah, when it was 